Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for day three in NOG 85. My name is Steve Muse, and I'm a member of the program committee. I'll be the session moderator for the morning this, today, and we'll have great content and hope you enjoy the final day of our meeting here in Montreal. Today we have health professionals on site at the Fairmont Queen Elizabeth Hotel, the ping room up on the third floor until 1 p.m. to conduct COVID-19 for NANOG attendees who require an official negative test result for travel back to their home country. Refer to the welcome to NANOG 85 Wednesday edition for more email for more information. And reminder, use the NANOG platform chat window for general conversations. Questions for speakers should be entered into the Q&A tab of the chat box or you can step up to one of the floor mics or if you're in the room. If you need assistance with any technical issues, please use the help tab. Additionally, presentation slide decks can be found in the agenda if you'd like to follow along. Now on to the presentations. Joining me on stage is Edward McNair and Kat Kerinsky for the NANOG 85 community meeting. Edward, who everybody knows, is the executive director of NANOG. And we're so happy to have him on stage with us today. Welcome, Edward. Okay. Oh, I don't know if you want me to go into the next one. And then to do the... Oh, okay. okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Kat is the chair of the NANOG program committee, and she's also a senior network engineer. She's traveled to us today from Austin, Texas. Welcome to the community meeting. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Uh, good morning, everyone. How are you guys all doing today? So it's kind of a quiet crowd. I'm sure a lot of people were out during the festivities, kind of drinking and boozing and crowsing and enjoying one another's company. But I'm here to wake you guys up and welcome you again to the third day of NANOG. Uh, again, thank you all for coming. This has been an, an amazing meeting. Um, the venue is lovely. The food has been great. And it's been really good connecting with people and, again, being at another um, uh, NANOG conference. And also, it's great to be back in Canada. So I want to take a few minutes this morning and I'm going to talk about a few things in regards to the organization and the community just to kind of bring you guys up to speed to some of the things that are happening within the org. So first thing I'd like to talk about is registration fee increase. Everyone loves to pay more money, don't we? No one likes to pay more money, um, but things cost more. And so therefore, as an organization, we're going to have to push those costs forward to be able to provide, again, a, uh, a good meeting experience and also to keep, make sure that we push in some ways to move toward the black in the way we're operating. So here we've got two tables, one showing you where, where our costs were before, another showing where our costs are advancing to. Um, to one thing to note, in our next meeting, our early bird fee will be $675. If you, want, if you look at this chart, and if you look at, if you're talking about the late fee uh, for a non-member pricing versus early bird for member pricing, you really best, you know, kind of you focus on is to register early. If you register early, you're not going to be incurring additional cost or you'll be minimizing the increase that you're, you're experiencing. Also to note, um, and I'll give you a comparative, IETF registration for early bird is $700. So we're still you know, cheaper than they are, are equal in the terms of the non-member pricing, but we feed you. And we believe that feeding you is an important part of building community. So we want to continue to do that. So uh, help support NANOG. So through sponsorship and donations and volunteering so that we can continue to bring you guys the best experience while at the same time minimizing how we start, how much we charge you for this experience. So development projects. So there's a big development project that we've been working on, something that the community has been asking for for a great deal of time, and that is for an appointment tool. Um, as much as people come to NANOG meetings for the educational experience and also connecting with others, this is a great place to do business. And we're trying to create and, and provide you a tool that will facilitate that engagement in, um, in terms of making appointments and communicating with other people. The appointment tool is currently in the beta stage. On May 26, we opened that up and demoed it to a group of volunteer beta testers that we have, also the board, and in addition to those on the program committee. And I want to appreciate, I want to thank everyone for all that help that they're going to give us in helping to deliver a great tool to our community. Um, the beta testers are currently giving feedback on this uh, through a dedicated Slack channel, and the core calendaring features are intact. Um, and we're still working on some bug fixes and also adding additional features to it. 
Um, the public beta will be released at the same time Nanog 86 registration takes place. So all of you will be able to participate, use the appointment tool, give us feedback so that we can continue to enhance that tool and get an effort to provide a better service to our community. Affinity groups. Um, in the opening keynote, um, uh, opening uh, uh, presentation, Tina talked about affinity groups. Community is a very key part of Nanog, and in trying to expand that community and to, to kind of bind community, we've developed on our um, on community.nanog.org, we have affinity groups. Now, the purpose of affinity groups is to allow you the ability to be able to self-gather in areas that are of common interest. Some of those are network operation, uh, ne sorry, network automation, uh, women in tech, LGBTQ+, renting, coffee, walking, whiskey, connoisseurs, diversity and technology, and more. We also can create any type of group that you're, you're looking for. If you find something that, that's missing, go to our Nanog website, click on the feedback button, and then just say, hey, Edward, we'd love to have a group set up that we can get together this. So we're trying to encourage you to connect more with us, have a way prior to the meeting to be able to gather people together and meet. For example, Sean Winstead, who's on Nanox staff, had a walking affinity group. And this morning, I think it was four, five of us went out walking around through the underground as a way of kind of connecting. And I had some great conversations on the way. So these affinity groups are a great way for us to connect and to build and enhance the community that we have here at Nanoc. So I'm gonna take a minute and talk about our um, community uh, forum and what you can find there. So when you land on the page, again, community.nanog.org, currently the way it's structured, you have to have an account at Nanog. Uh, it's free to sign up, have an account. And then once you have your account, you can then come to the community server. What it will do when you go to community.nanog.org, it will push you back to the Nanoc account for validation. We use ORF2 validation for this. And then, boom, you can be right back, right down the community forum. So here's what the landing page looks like. And one of the things I want to talk about for a moment is that we have a mirror of the mailing list. And so I'm going to show you a few items that will show you how the community, uh, the, the community forum functions and works for you. So if you were to click on the first page landing you into the, the mailing list mirror, here's what you're going to see. You're going to see a series of the most recent things that have hit the mailing list. Again, this is read only. You can see how many replies that we've had, how many views, what's, when was the last time you had activity in that. If you dig in further, you'll see, boom, someone pasted an article in here. Now, what um, Discourse does, if someone put a link, it'll automatically grab a caption from that website detailing what it is. There'll be information there. Off to the uh, right side, you'll see a little information sh uh, so showing you what is the timeline of all the communication that goes along on that thread. And that a synopsis right across the bottom, you'll see who are the major contributors to that particular thread. Scrolling down further, here you'll see replies and comments. Now what this is doing, again, it's a mirror of mailman. All it's doing is taking the information is going into Mailman and posting it out in a graphical format. It's the same way this would function in terms of in the affinity groups. You'd be able to go in and um, either through email communicate with it or directly online being able to make a submission reply. If you, for example, when it came to walking, I asked Dinesh if you wanted to walk with us. It grabbed Dinesh, sent him a email correspondence asking if you want to participate and that's replied to the email and then it appeared right there in the forum. So you can either interact with it directly or you can interact with it uh, via mail. So um, Nanon College Immersion Program. We restructured our NCI program. We wanted to have it to be a lot more targeted to focus on bringing the most qualified students to the Nanon to experience this. Um, it is now going to be uh, sponsor based um, uh, the qualifications mirror the same qualifications that we have for the scholarship program. Um, and there's also now an opportunity for graduate students to apply individually. The way the NCI program is structured, 
a, uh, a professor can bring up to five students along with them. The reason why we have that stipulation and why undergraduate students can't come individually is because we don't have the space to really chaperone them because a lot of them will be under 21. Having a professor who come along with them will one, make sure there's someone who's invested in their education coming along with them. Secondly, help to keep them focused as they come through and, through and, and enhance the learning process for the students. For graduate students, they can apply independently. Again, graduate students at that level are much more self-managed. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, the program is now sponsor-funded. Um, in this particular NANOG, we had students from Howard who were participating. So it was a great victory to have some students from an HBCU attend NANOG. And it's part of our commitment to diversity and expanding of our community. The NANOG 84 Odds Bodsman Report. So um, the odds the Budsman exist, again, as part of that commitment to diversity and inclusion within our organization. It's one thing to say that diversity matters to you, that inclusion matters to you. It's another thing to really kind of put your money where your mouth is. For us to have an environment at Nanog, if we want to bring diversity, one, it's not just going to walk in through the front door. You're going to have to go out and assist, solicit it and work to bring it in. Secondly is when people come, they need to feel that they're safe, that they're included, and they're welcome within our community. And so having the odds buds here is about creating a structure, creating a formal space where if I do have experience a problem, that I can go to the ombudsman for support. Again, which that would be directed to me. Um, the way things were structured before, if there were any complaints or problems, they came to me directly, which was fine. But then it's all based upon my particular internal bias. The other thing is, what happens if you have a problem with me? Who are you going to go and turn to? Having the ombudsman as a third party here to support and protect the best interest of the community was one of the best ways that we could go about assuring that you could have the best experience possible. Now, here is a list of some of the things that the ombudsman found in terms of formal concerns that came about. Uh, I'm not going to take and read all of this here uh, in this space, but at the bottom of the screen there, you can see where the link to the full report is. Um, if you go to the NANOG website, go to resources, scroll down from resources and you'll find ombudsman. Click on that, you'll get a description of our ombudsman. At the very bottom of that, you'll see a link to the report. So going forward, after each conclusion of each meeting, there will be a report, we're graded. The actual grade on our last was 71 out of 100. We do have work to do, but I believe we're moving in that right direction. And to that end, um, I did an interview with the students from Howard, and first they wanted to communicate to you all, thank you so much for having them at the NANOG event. They had a wonderful time. They said that they felt very included. Um, in fact, the biggest comment was, I wish I had known about this earlier. It would have really had a profound impact on their college experience. So thank you all for making sure that everyone felt welcome and a part of our community. Annual report. Our annual report will be re released shortly. We were hoping to have it released prior to the meeting, but we got busy. But um, you'll be seeing it in the next couple of weeks. It'll be, uh, you'll find out about it in our newsletter. We'll also post it out on our mailing list and also on social media. So look for that to come out soon. Our annual report is our effort in terms of the board to provide transparency to our community about how our organization is run, the projects that we're working on, and how we're trying to build community and further enhance the way NANOG as, a, as an organization operates. That being said, I'll turn off the program, but before I do, I want to give a particular congratulations to the program committee. I think they have done a stellar job with this particular program. This is, comes back from efforts that started a few years ago where the program committee tried to find ways that they could better serve our community to provide a better program. And I think this, this particular event is the fruits of that later. So if everyone could kind of give a round of applause for all those who are part of the program committee. Thanks. Thank you. I'm Kat Kerinsky, Chair of the Program Committee. So um, where, how we got here to this amazing agenda you saw uh, these last few days is we've been doing a rolling call for presentations. Um, and this means like if you have an idea, but you're not going to be around for NANOG 86, but you will be for 87. You can submit that now. You used to always have to wait a couple of years ago until it was just for that call for presentations for the next NANOG. And 
and maybe it, you forget, it didn't work out, but now you can pre-plan. This is especially nice for our um, overseas attendees that have to deal with visas and things too, if they can plan out even earlier than a month or two before, because we can also accept earlier. So earlier submissions give you two big um, pros, right? You can get more time for improvements and feedback, and then um, we can consider it for voting, you know, as soon as we have a draft slide deck. And then if that means we can accept it early now, right? You can get that business and those travel approvals, those visas all worked out, and we can publish the agenda much earlier than we used to because we can have a lot of accepted talks earlier on with the rolling call for submissions, which did happen this time. We had a very early published agenda, if you didn't notice, because we had so many come in early. Um, right now, you can submit all the way up through Nanoc 89. Uh, so as a result of this, we already have four talks accepted and confirmed for Nanoc 86 in Hollywood, and that was even a few weeks ago. That didn't even happen this week. Um, and then we have 12 talks as of last night when I made this slide that are still in pending status already um, for consideration. Some of those were deferred because we just couldn't squeeze everybody in for Nanoc 85. And some of those were submitted directly for 86 from the beginning. So let's talk a little bit about the life cycle of a talk submission. What does a shepherd and a content reviewer do? So a shepherd guides you through your process the whole way from submission to peer review and acceptance if applicable. Right, so when you go and submit that form and here's my talk and maybe I have slides, maybe I don't, the shepherd's going to reach out to you once that comes in. They're going to help guide you through everything. They're going to remind you if you don't have slides, you need to upload some, and then they're going to be the first person that looks at those, gives you some initial feedback. All right, this is good. Hey, maybe we should flesh this out. This might not be acceptable for the Nanog. This is too much marketing, whatever. Um, but they'll work with you on that. And then the content reviewer, you can think of them like your copy editor. Oh, I found a typo on slide three. Hey, you accidentally forgot to remove that this is confidential on the bottom because it's obviously not if you're going to present it at Nanog. We get a lot of those. You laugh, but it's true. <laughs> People use their slide decks from work, right? And often don't even think about it, but a lot of those slide deck templates you get from work have confidential and internal only. So your content reviewer will, will catch those things and make sure you don't go on stage with that. Um, and then make sure that our Nanog um, presentation guidelines are met. You know, sometimes very small fonts are incredibly hard to read back there or on a small little phone. So we're looking at you know, your font sizes to make sure that all of you reading these slides can have a good experience because you can actually read the slides and not squint and have to pull on the magnifying glasses. So here you can kind of see the, the, the circle of the cycle, right? You've got the rolling call for proposals. So we receive proposals. We assign you that shepherd and content reviewer. Hopefully get some draft slides into us. And then once we have all of that, and we've worked through your draft slides, that's when we can do our peer review. Um, and then if you are accepted, then the rest of this applies. Then your final slides will be due later on. We can publish the, or sorry, slides are due. So that looks a little backwards. I will fix that for next time because <laughs> we need to have the proper slides for peer review, not the final slides, but we do have to have something workable. Um, we can publish our agenda, get your final slides before the conference, and then our conference can begin. Uh, I did want to talk about this draft slides, right? So. Um, you don't have to have your final slides to be accepted for voting. They just need to be fleshed out a little more than your abstract and enough to get your point across to the reviewers of what you're planning to present. So don't feel like you have to have a 100% completed and finalized presentation to be considered for voting. 60, 70, 80% is fine as long as you know that you're gonna fix that before you do your, your recording or show up in person. Um, so a lot of people stress about that. Um, when that worry, oh, but other places don't require me to have slides. Yes, we do, but we just want to get that rough idea of where you're going with this. We're not looking for the full product. We don't expect you to commit extra time if we may not consider the talk. So always just get a, a you know, rough, start with a rough outline. We'll talk to you and explain if that's enough or not. And then if we like it, we'll, we'll send it over for voting and we can hopefully accept that. And then you can finish fleshing it out. We're here to increase your chances of success, though. That is, your, your perm committee members and your shepherds are really your advocates, right? So we've been getting a lot of submission rates increasing. Um, we had so many submissions for this one compared to the last few. It was really, really humbling and amazing. But get your draft slides in as early as possible as a result. If you're going to be the person now that waits till the deadline, that, that last day may even be too late. We might even be filling up before then sometimes. So please get those drafts in, no matter how rough early on so that we can get you into consideration and have more time to peer review with you. Um, and then again, reference the Nanoc presentation guidelines on the website that talks about those font sizes and those logo placements and all that. But if you forget to, that's what your content reviewer is there for. 
um, polls. Oh, we're skipping this. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, and Q and A. Does anyone have questions for Edward or myself? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, does it Dinesh? Dinesh has a question. There's one Q and A. All right, go to Dinesh's or that. Dinesh, go ahead. It's on. Hi, uh, Dinesh Babuta in personal capacity. Um, uh, thank you for the updates. Um, I have a question in terms of, you've mentioned, and this is for Kat, um, mm -hmm. you mentioned about um, submissions of presentations, um, call for proposals and things. Um, have you considered uh, doing other types of content during the meeting? So things like um, poster sessions and things. Let's ask the question again. Some of like the posted kind of sessions, like those hallway, and I, yeah, can you oh, yeah. go into um, it one more? But I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So one of the things is that um, with my other hats on, we've looked at who submits presentations, and normally it's um, generally the same people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we find that people are too shy to present. They don't have presentation styles which keep the audience engaged, but they have really good content. And I'm just wondering if doing things like poster sessions where during the breaks they can stand next to their poster and people can come and ask them questions. It's something to consider. Yeah. We just haven't thought about it. So um, the way the program committee is structured, uh, they're self-governing. It's a decision that will be made by the program committee. So it's one of those things that we they'll, they'll take this information and feedback to the program and they'll see if that's something that seems viable for NANOP. But, please, please put that in your um, surveys as well as we yeah. Yeah, include that. Cause the program committee will be reviewing all the surveys, and that will be a great one for us to follow up on for sure. Yeah, Thanks. good yeah. suggestion. And in the future, we also hope to have a second panel, uh, second track again. Um, yeah. That's just been a, a budgetary concern um, for this year, but you know, having like a dedicated tutorials and tracks room is something that will sure. be coming back in the next year or so. Yeah, and another thing that um, I think was mentioned earlier in the conference, either by Tina or Kat, um, and this refers to what you said, Dinesh, about whether you're shy or not. Mm -hmm. If someone feels uncomfortable coming to the mic, you can also use our chat system to ask questions as well. So even though you're physically here, you can use our chat system to ask a question. You got a question? For one, one question from the virtual attendees is, why isn't there a member discount for virtual attendants? Um, the reason being is because virtual attendees have uh, two options. One, they can pay $100 or two, they can go the complimentary route and pay nothing. So to me, that's a pretty good discount. So, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a voluntary response we got on the channel was that uh, um, you can pay for, uh, use the free remote and then if your company was willing to do a donation. For exactly. Exactly. Kind of exactly. Yeah. And that's we, what I heard all of you. Did yeah. your company will reimburse that? Great. And if they won't and $100 is too much for your pockets, do the zero. Exactly. We want to make this content as available as possible. And that's why we've also spent the energy, time and effort to make as strong a virtual platform as we have. And even with that, we take and post all of this on YouTube a week later. So we try to make this content as accessible as possible. Excellent. Well, thank you, Edward and Kat. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right. Thank you all. all right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.